Right, so I thought I'd talk you through the traction engine and where I've got to today. So this is what's on the workbench. Oh, it's been on the workbench for quite a while now, but um, this little traction engine, so it's a 120th scale barrel. Um, it started as a design for a traction engine that would fit on a page of A4 in elevation. And I'll show you the drawing that inspired it in a second. Um, in terms of parts, it's standing there and there's a lot of it looks like it's done, but there's still a lot of it to do yet. Um, but I'll take you through where I am so you can see the progress. You can see the, some of the questions that are going through my head at the moment in terms of what do I do next and, and where do I concentrate on and what do I work on? Um, what are some of the issues I've got to solve? And some of that means I've got to build things in certain sequences and certain, and, and certain ways. Um, but I'll talk you through where I am. Let's just start off with um, so this is my this is my scrapbook. The can of coke is not there for uh, any other reason than just to really give you a, a scale, an idea of scale of this engine. So uh, this is my scrapbook with all my calculations and all my pictures in it. Now, but what you can see here is the drawing that inspired me in the first place. So this is a an A4 piece of A4 paper. It's an A4 book. Um, with this drawing of this engine. So in elevation, it fits on a sheet of A4. That, that, was, that was where I started. Um, it is um, 120th scale. Um, the engine itself is 263 millimeters long overall. It's 176 millimeters high and it's 122 millimeters wide. Now I've got this drawing plus other drawings of engines that have just given me a, a, a way in which to, to scale the thing and just sort of design it. Um, this engine is a compound barrel, which is a bit of a difference in that the engine I'm going to make is going to be a single, single cylinder, double acting uh, steam engine. Now let's go back to some of the dimensions and I'll, I'll just tell you where we are. So we've got, let's put the engine back on there. You can see it fits nicely on that on that drawing and it fits nicely on that A4 page. It actually overlays it very well. Um, the wheels are 97, the rear wheels are 97 millimeter diameter. Uh, the front wheels um, are 70 millimeter diameter. In the wheels, if I just take one off, we'll just drop that one down for a second. So this is a rear wheel. Um, you can see the 16 brass spokes on each of the rear wheels. They're riveted on, they're bolted and riveted actually. These are little brass bolts that have been riveted over. Um, and then a hub in there, in this case a steel hub on the rears and a brass hub on the fronts, but a steel hub on the rears. And that's just, still, just uh, soft soldered into there actually, just to align it all. Now that was all jigged. The, the, the treads themselves are all part of the main rim and they were machined. Uh, indexed on the milling machine and cut. The axle is just a it's just a temporary axle in here at the moment. Um, this axle needs a I've got to do a fair bit of work to design this axle yet because I've got to go and design the differential. I am going to be fitting a differential and I've got to also design the gear ratio which is roughly the gears give me a 10 to 1 ratio from the engine crankshaft speed down to wheel speed. So I'll put that just well, actually, let's just leave that off for a minute. You can see that the actual main uh, tub of the engine is brass. Um, I've made this all in one. This is one piece. And then the firebox itself, you'll see in a minute when I take you through it, is a, is a steel construction um, with the boiler pushed into it. So let's just take out this only a temporary axle on here. The flywheel made from solid piece of cast iron machined up. Um, I'll take out these little bearing blocks. There's a bit of work to do there yet on those. Take these wheels off and then we can just turn it over and you can see then hopefully into the underside of the of the actual firebox and the and the boiler. Um, so the boiler um, sits and pushes into the firebox. It's just a cylindrical boiler with seven flues that will be uh, silver soldered into place. The fire will sit under here. Uh, now whether I'm going to gas fire it or fire it with methylated spirits is still a little bit up for debate. Effectively get some heat directly onto the boiler surface here and then the rest goes through and in through the actual uh, down through the flues and then out through the chimney. Um, 
Now, as I said, it's a steel, separate steel firebox in which that boiler sits. So there's no, there's no water around the outside of that firebox absorbing the heat. But um, that gives you just a, just an idea of the simplicity. I've had to make that simple at this scale. This is everything's quite small. Uh, the boiler itself is just one and three quarter inches uh, in diameter. Now, if I put these wheels back on, um, it should be. Let me just put these back on and just see where we get to. It's that way around. Let's get those on right, or I'll get someone will comment on that. So those wheels should be on that way around, with the treads running that way. Now, so I've got to make those. Yeah, I've got to do the hubs, the front wheels. I've done the hubs. Um, you can see they're on a on an axle that pivots, and that sits underneath the firebox. Uh, and the chimney itself uh, is machined from mild steel and brass, brass top on it, and then that's all silver soldered together. I've got to just make fixings for that on here. Um, if we go around to the back of the firebox, we drop this down. Let's just move these out of the way. Let's tell you what, let's just pick this up and that makes it easier if we put it on there. We can turn this around now and you can see hopefully the back of the actual firebox and the door. And the door just opens so that you can see in through the actual firebox there. So I can shut that again. Now these are all riveted with 1 16th of an inch rivets here. These rivets for this, this bulkhead here that goes at an angle, these are actually, I've turned rivets into bolts and this is bolted into place at the moment. A little bit more work before I finally fix that because I've got to make a decision on whether I'm going to turn this lower volume into an actual working water tank or not. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about that. I think I might still yet because that gives me a, a chance then to build an injector and uh, I mean, this can run for a much more, much longer time. At the front of the engine, um, uh, let's just let's just look here. The engine here, you can see that I've got um, the fire door, smoke box door. Sorry, I just lost the nut for that. That's gone somewhere. Um, if I just open that door, you can see it's on hinges. It needs to be fitted yet, but I've got a I've got an etched door onto a steel background plate. Um, again, I'm going to do a bit more work yet on this to try and uh, to just uh, turn that into two separate bands. I think that will look better. I've thought about curving it. I'm not sure yet. Um, let's just pull that through. That, that can we can do that later. Um, we'll sort that out later. So this is where I am. Mm. The latest parts. I've got a steering wheel that's got to be fitted onto here. So the steering wheel has been machined out of brass and then with a tiny little brass handle. This is just 22 millimeters diameter. It's quite simple to make these. We're just indexing to make those. Um, this is going to fit onto here, onto a steel shaft that turns a worm gear that works the gear to work the steering. And then for the steering, I've got some chains that I've ordered. So here's the chain. Um, fairly fine chain but it's quite good so this is what I'm going to be using as the for the actual chain for the steering a um, bit of work there yet to, to get that to look right but that will go on to the steering I'm not going to make that here's one of the other brass um, etchings that I've done for the door um, you can see there's, uh, there's quite a depth to this etching um, the, the lettering Actually, that was uh, Patrick who's sorted out that font for me and got that pack, that font right. That was really good because um, that's very close to what's the original font you see from a barrel. Um, but again, you know, nowadays we have an electronic font, so it's quite different to the fonts that they were producing in, in wood in, in the 1880s, 1890s, and then casting in sand. Um, but this is pretty good, pretty close. Um, and then the final part that I've got I've made is the uh, the block and the saddle block for the cylinder. So I decided that the cylinder, it wasn't going to be a cast iron block that gets bolted onto the cylinder with all the issues of sealing it and uh, fixing it. Um, what I would do is make this block up. Now these, these little bolts around the outside here are just going to be for show. This will get cleaned off again and all the heads will be cleaned and smoothed back down. And then this will get silver soldered onto 
the actual barrel of, and the cylinder of the boiler. And then I'll bolt the cylinder to the side here and I'll bolt the, the valve chest to this side. So it gives me a, a just a bit of a way of breaking down the cylinder block at the, again at this scale. The cylinder block is only 20 millimeters long. Uh, the piston it will be it will be 12 millimeter bore. Um, I'm looking at 12 millimeter stroke. I might try and push that out a little bit if I can within reason to make that stroke perhaps closer to you know even up to 17 millimeters to give me a little bit more uh, engine um, torque. Um, but but we'll see how we get on with that. So that's where we are. That's um that's the one twentieth scale barrel. As I said, fits on a sheet of A4. So follow my progress. Subscribe. I will I will I will write, I will uh, produce more videos on this as I go. I will also be putting a lot of pages up on my blog. So follow me at glueit.com. Subscribe to me below, and if you like it, give me a thumbs up, and that'll encourage me to do a bit more. Thank you for watching.